Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today we're talking all the ins and outs of knock tuning from the very beginning of the actual making of the arrow all the way to putting a bullet hole through paper. But first things first, before we talk about knock tuning and why it's so important, we need to first understand arrow build, how arrows are actually constructed and why knock tuning with carbon arrows is actually a pretty significant and very useful tool. So here in my hand, I have three different arrows from three different companies. I have a gold tip XT Hunter, a Sirius Apollo, hollow and an Easton aluminum arrow and they're all fantastic and they all can serve the purpose of whether you're shooting in your backyard going to the range or hunting in the whitetail woods so an aluminum arrow is not created with a seam and this is going to be a recurring theme throughout this video aluminum arrows are constructed a lot similarly to a aluminum pop can a beverage can of some sort it starts out as a flat disc of aluminum and then it is stretched out to the particular diameter of the overall shaft as well as the thickness of the interior wall. Both those numbers combined, like 23, 15, 22, 19, they come up with the static spine for the arrow. With a carbon arrow, whether it is wrapped or it is woven, depending on the manufacturer, there are seams throughout the arrow. And instead of being a flat disc that gets pulled into an aluminum arrow where there are no seams, carbon arrows do have seams. And that is very important to understand when we start talking about spine. So let's take this serious Apollo arrow here. It's a 204 diameter arrow, very heavy, very beautiful he has a real thick wall it's a great hunting overall hunting shaft but the thing being a carbon arrow is that it has a wrap somewhere and if I was to pop the knock I can't actually see it but somewhere in this shaft there is a part where it is weaker and there is a part where there is stiffer because the wrap eventually of the carbon runs out right just like on a roll of tape or a roll of paper so eventually there is a part that is thinner and therefore weaker within the spine tolerance and there are a part that is thicker and therefore stiffer in the spine tolerance so this two 50, its stiff side might be like a 247 and its weak side might be like a 253 or something like that and if your knock is just placed randomly you could be in a stiff spot in a weak spot or somewhere in the middle depending on the build of the arrow so now that we understand that carbon arrows have that seam and they have that strong side the weak side and then the middle ground in between which is ultimately where most of that spine is so this is a 300 spine gold tip here it's my traditional hunting arrow and I have a hundred grain of brass and 125 grain point. I'm going to shoot this because I've already built it. I like to have my arrows when I knock tune already built, just no fletchings. I don't want to be fiddling around with point weights and cutting the shaft to different lengths. I want to build the arrow that I want, which for me, this is a 31 inch arrow. I have 225 up front and I have the right spine that I need for my bow setup. It's super important when you go to knock tune and you go to bear shaft tune that you're using an arrow that is appropriately spined. Sure, like I said, there's some variance in here, but not a hundred in terms of the variance, right? So if you should be shooting a 300, a 340, or a 400, it's just not going to cut it. You need to be shooting an arrow that is an appropriate spine for the amount of point weight, the amount of poundage, and the draw length that you shoot. So once I have my arrow built, it's now important for me to get my bow to the specs that I need it to be. Sure, my arrow is built to the specifications that I want to shoot, be it for the overall weight or the FOC or whatever it is. I also need to make sure that my bow is set up with within the manufacturer specs because that makes this whole process a lot easier. I don't want to be messing around with this and messing around with my arrows. That's too many variables. I don't have a control. This is my control variable here. Nothing changes here. Everything is set exactly the way I want it. The peeps in the right place, the D loops in the right place. All I have to do eventually is just move the rest around to get that perfect tune. Now you can build a DIY type paper tuning stand. You can cut out a cardboard box and tape a piece of copier paper to it. I don't care. I'm actually super tall. I'm six foot four. So most often I actually end up kind of having to spread my legs apart to get down lower or even shoot off my knees or off my backside because I want to make sure that I'm shooting perfectly perpendicular into the face of that paper. I don't want to be shooting down at an angle or up at an angle because that's going to send the arrow through the paper, not at a flat level trajectory. And I might get some weird tears through paper where the knock is up higher or the knock is down lower, depending on how the paper is situated in front of me. And the same thing goes true for left and right. I want to make sure that I am perfectly perpendicular or perfectly parallel when it comes to my feet 
with the paper. So that way I'm not getting any weird left and right issues because I'm shooting through the paper at an angle. So now can finally come the fun part. And by the fun part, I mean the monotonous time consuming one, because this is not going to happen in a day. It takes me two or three days to do a dozen arrows of knock tuning, and I've been doing it for quite some time. It all comes down to you now being consistent with your form, your release, and making sure that the arrow is impacting and tearing the paper consistently each and every single time. So for the sake of consistency in particular, if I'm doing six or a dozen arrows at a time, I want to make sure I'm working with just one arrow at a time. I don't want to be shooting a whole bunch through paper. I focus this on an arrow by arrow basis. So I make sure that my knock is rotated so all of the cresting of my arrows are all facing up in the same direction. And I know that one arrow that I'm knock tuning, it will be the one that will be off. And I know that it is done, whereas the rest of them, if the cresting is still up, I know I haven't touched them yet and they still need to be knocked. All right, so here we get started at six, seven, eight feet away from the paper. I don't want to start out at 15, 20, 25 feet or even further. That might be all well and good, but it's not going to be a great indicator of what is happening right out of the bow. You need to catch right out of the bow first before you start worrying about what's happening downrange. In particular, if the tune is not going to be set up perfectly right out of the gate or very close to it, you're going to have some really nasty tears at 15, 20, 25 feet, and it's going to be really discouraging when you see that. So start close, keep that paper in short, get little tears, work with that with the knock tune, and then go from there. So I'll take this one arrow and I'll shoot it through paper two or three times. Then I will start knock tuning and I go in 90 degree increments. I'll start by like that crest being up facing up towards the sky and then I'll rotate it 90 degrees either clockwise or counterclockwise. It's up to you and then I will leave the knock in its original position. So if I was to take this arrow here rotate 90 degrees and then shoot it again rotate 90 degrees and shoot it again. The first tear that you get through paper could be really good or it could be really bad. You don't know until you shoot it. You could be in the right place when it comes to the knock and you won't know if you go to the wrong place until you rotate it. I told you, this is gonna take some time. So at this point, I'm not doing anything with the bow. I'm not moving the rest. I'm not playing with twisting cables to get cams to rotate differently. I'm not touching a lick with it. I'm just shooting the arrows and rotating the knocks in 90 degrees increments. Eventually, I'm going to get to a point where that one arrow, let's say it started off with a right tear that was an inch long, and I rotate that knock 90 degrees. Now the tear is getting better, and then I rotate it again, and it gets better still, and then I rotate it a third time, and it gets worse. Ah, now I know I need to go back, and so I'll go back to that particular rotation, which was two rotations, and then I will then put that back in my quiver, pull out a second arrow, and do the process all over again. The whole goal here is to get all my arrows to be in the right spine variance based on that wrap inside the shaft that they're all tearing exactly the same through paper. I don't care if they're at bullet holes right now. If they are, that's great, but if they're not, I don't care. I'm worried that they're all tearing the same direction and the same length through paper. Now here's a disclaimer. So you buy half a dozen to a dozen shafts and you shoot and everything's going great but then you get that one arrow that will not cooperate. Don't worry, it's not you. <laughs> Trust me, in each dozen batch of shafts that I give, there is usually one that just will not cooperate. He'll get close, but maybe he tears longer, or maybe he'll tear lower or tear higher. And you know what? That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. When we go to move our rest later, if it's still worse than the other shafts, then you know that's not a great arrow to put a fixed blade broadhead onto, for example. Probably shoot just fine with field points and hanging out in the backyard or at the local range but that might not be a hunting arrow that you want to take in the woods with you if you can't get it to tune with the rest of your shafts. And also while I'm on this side note, you can do this with fletch shafts too if you don't fletch your own arrows and you just buy them straight from the factory with fletchings on or from your local pro shop with the fletchings on. You can just only work with the three fletching orientation that you have. So you'll have the one uh, off color vein and the two that are the same and so your veins might be sticking in different directions with different colors but you can do this if you have in particular that one or two arrow that I alluded to that just doesn't want to play nice you can get that one to potentially tune out with a little bit of knock tuning. Shot one and two there was no movement here I simply was working with the torque of the bow and I put these arrows here we have the point on the right and it impacted knock left that's what these arrows mean. Then I rotated 90 degrees 
and that knock left hair didn't change all that much. Maybe got a little bit shorter. I rotated another 90 degrees and it totally flip-flopped. Now it actually was point low and up to the right. So this actually completely flip-flopped based on that seam of that spine. Rotate another 90 degrees, so I've now rotated it uh, 270 degrees. Shot five is almost a perfect bolt hole. We're just a little bit knock left. That's where I want. So now I'm actually ready to move on to the second arrow and I'm, always, and I'm ready to start knock tuning it and hopefully can get it to this same point. So after I've shot all of my arrows through paper and they're all tearing the exact same way, now I will go ahead and move my rest to get that perfect bullet hole. I'm still at that short six, seven, eight foot distance. I have not moved back to any longer distance yet. I'm still very close. I wanna get them all as coming straight off of the bow as possible and consistently off the bow as possible. Possible. So remember, when it comes to left and right tears, you chase the point. So if the point is impacting the paper to the left, then you move your rest to the left. And if your point is impacting to the right, then you move your rest to the right. Now it's opposite for the vertical. So if your point is down and your knock is up, you need to lift the point up to be in line with the knock. If your point is impacting up and your knock is impacting low, then you have to lower the point. So now all of my arrows should be tuning exactly the same because they were all not tuned to be tearing exactly the same through paper. Now I can move back if I really want to, maybe that 10, 15, if I want to push it 20, but I don't go any further than that. Because remember, if you have wind impacting the arrow, there's no fletchings on here to correct itself. Sure, it might fly really, really well. And if you have a good amount of FOC, it might get pulled through the air a lot easier than a really light, super fast arrow, but it's still not going to be perfectly corrected and you're going to get tears, at least in my experience. If you want to go pro and you want to do all sorts of other stuff sure go ahead and shoot bear shafts at 30 yards i don't care have fun with it but don't over frustrate yourself trying to get perfect bullet holes at distances where really the fletchings are going to take over i don't actually have a high speed camera to estimate or to actually know but my guess is within that 15 to 20 foot mark the fletchings are going to start to take over the arrow will be done paradoxing and since you've actually made it as straight as possible already out of the bow the fletchings have very little to correct. So if you have a little form tweak or you put a broad head on here, those fletchings are going to handle it with flying colors because the actual tube it's trying to control is already coming off perfect. So once I get them all with that little bit of rest adjustment to shoot a bullet hole, I'll take a Sharpie and I'll mark the knock on the knock indexer, which is the little piece of plastic or an indent into the plastic of the knock that sticks out on the side. I'll mark the knock indexer with a particular spot there on the shaft. And that way I know that's where the knock needs to go when I fletch my arrows and I can rotate it back so it's perfectly in line. And I know that I have a perfectly knock tune arrow. So lastly, I cannot stress how fickle bear shaft tuning and knock tuning can be. Don't overwork yourself. Remember, this is fun. Archery is supposed to be fun. You're supposed to be enjoying this while you're trying to build the most accurate arrow possible. If it's frustrating, you're not having a good time, do not panic. Do not overwork yourself. Maybe move the rest a little bit if you're having a really bad left-right tear or really bad up-down tear. Move the rest a little bit so they're flying a little bit better, but then come back to it in a week or two or a month. Don't stress about it now. We still have a few more weeks until archery season. Don't worry about it if it's not perfect. You will get there, I promise. Enjoy the sport first. That's more important and more critical than building the world's most accurate arrow. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook and Instagram. My email's even down there. And of course, always leave a comment here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation. And we'll get to see you next time.